in his word, God has given us a clear framework for understanding the world, not through personal opinions or traditions trashed down by others, but through the lens of a biblical worldview. This worldview stands on five foundational pillars. If you grasp it, it will change how you see everything around you. Pillar number one, creation. God created all things. We didn't come from some random cosmic explosion. It's not just improbable, it's absurd. Believing in evolution takes more faith than to believe it in the first five books of the Bible. In the beginning, God. The Bible tells us that Yahweh, Elohim, in the plural said, let us make man in our own image. We are not accidents. We are intentional creations of a sovereign God. Pillar number two, the fall. Genesis 3 tells us that humanity rebelled against God in the Garden of Eden. As a result, sin entered the world and every human being is born with what theologians call original sin. You see, this explains the suffering we see around us. People often question why a good God would allow evil and pain. But without a biblical worldview, they can't reconcile the existence of a loving God with a broken world. I know through my biblical lens that we live in a Genesis 3 world where death, disease, war, and suffering exist because of sin. Every tear you've shed, every heartbreak, every illness is a result of the fall. We are living in a broken creation. Pillar number three, redemption. This is the pillar that impacts us most right now. We live in an era of redemption, the time between Christ's resurrection and his return. During this period, God is actively reconciling a chosen people to himself, those who will spend eternity with him. This is the narrow window we have to bring as many people as possible aboard the ark of salvation before time runs out. 2,000 years ago, this era was wide open. Today, we're on the back end of it. If you don't understand that we're in the era of redemption, you'll waste your time and live without purpose. But if you get this, your days, your prayers, your service will take on a new meaning because you'll know that the end is coming. Pillar number four, consummation. This is the next window, the end of all things as we know them. Jesus is returning. And when he does, he will come with a sword to separate those who belong to him from those who don't. This is not something far off. It's right around the corner. This consummation of God's plan is approaching and those who have ignored his call will face judgment. This is why the time we have now is so critical. Pillar number five, the new creation. Many of us spend our lives trying to create our own version of utopia here on earth, chasing after the perfect job, the house, the life. But hear me, God did not call you to create paradise now. That's something later in the new creation. Too many Christians are frustrated with God because they think his purpose is to make them happy here and now. But God isn't focused on your happiness. He's focused on your holiness. Sometimes God leaves unanswered prayers, pain and suffering in our lives to remind us that this world is not our home. If everything were perfect here, we wouldn't long for the perfect world to come. In his wisdom, the Lord allows us to experience disappointment, suffering, and unanswered prayers for a reason. He's not ignoring your pain. He's using it to shape you. Paul prayed three times for God to remove the thorn in his flesh. But God's response was simple. My grace is sufficient for you. Sometimes God leaves the thorn, the illness, and the hardship so we can fix our eyes on the better life to come. When you understand this, you'll stop being frustrated with what God hasn't done and start trusting in what he's preparing. Your suffering is meant to stir your heart to long for the eternal joy ahead, something far greater than any temporary happiness in this world could ever offer. If today's mathematics has inspired you, please support us by liking, following, subscribing, and sharing. And for free counseling and our blueprint for rebuilding your life, our community, visit our website, rebuildthecity.net. All our ministry materials are free. Your donations fuel our mission of spreading love in the gospel of Christ. To give, visit our donation tab on our website. Your gift to Rebuild the City, 501c3, makes a difference. Thank you, God bless, and I'll